Hello, and welcome back to Dear Ashley Grace. Today, we will be discussing the quick rise and fall of the R&B hip-hop group, Fatty Coo. In 2005, BET greenlit a docuseries following five young musicians residing in Columbus, Ohio. The show was created by David Sonnenberg, record executive and manager of Das Communications. In the docuseries, it followed the five young musicians through their journey of being signed to the label and releasing their first album. The original members of Fatty Coup were Ron, singer, songwriter, producer, musician, Valor, singer, songwriter, lead vocalist, Eddie B, singer, songwriter, producer, Marja, cellist, singer, songwriter, and Gabrielle, singer, songwriter, and musician. The group was found through the John Lennon Educational Tour Bus, a community outreach program. The mobile recording studio supported music education and allowed kids to record their own songs. The engineers on the bus liked what they heard and they sent this information over to the management at DAS Communication. After meeting with the young musicians, they were signed and everything moved full speed ahead. The group had only been together for three months before they were signed and were not all vocally strong, and it showed. Management had an issue with Eddie B's voice in particular. Like reality hit in the recording process sucked. You nervous? You all right? Nervous. You nervous? I'm nervous. Why? Oh, man, hold on. I can't. I'm trying to figure out the pitch. All I am, all I am. <laughs> Not right now. In a few minutes. Disappointed with the studio session, management decided to send the kids back to Ohio to regroup and to finish the album. Being back in familiar territory helped the group find their voices and to obtain more confidence in finishing their album. They created a makeshift studio to where they could record all of their music and really found the sound of the house of Fatty Coo. It was hot. It smelled like old, nasty, funky. It was just disgusting. And we were right by a train track. Take the headphones off and stop everything. We just wait, you know, and it was like so bootleg, man. Everything, how we did it. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> how most people record an album, but how we did it was just like, we had like a song idea and we'd bring it to Ron and he'd, he'd probably already have a beat or he'd just make one and then we just like would write it. Even though they were able to write songs together, like most groups, there was tension amongst the members mostly between Valor and Gabrielle, or Valor and everybody else. Stop, don't eat that. You gotta sing in a little bit, you dork. I know, Jerry helps my throat. Me and Gabrielle went to high school together. She was in my class, in my choir class, and she was like taking over the choir, and I think she always felt that she was like above me. Five band members fighting amongst each other like cats and dogs. They went from this to 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 after turning in their album, the group performed in their first live show. However, upon further review, management found issues with their stage presence, image, and vocals, particularly with Eddie B's voice. 
See, like right here, it's just so weak, Eddie. You know, vocally, there's just no. Um, Get in here. Can't hear him. Manager's really concerned about Eddie B. His vocals are really weak, so we have to kind of keep our eye out for how he performs live. Right, that was awful. Hello, guys. Hey, David. Hey. Hello. So, um, first of all, I've made it through your first live event. You're still standing. To be frank, um, I thought it was pretty, pretty awful. I'm not trying to be hurtful or mean. I'm just trying to be reality based. For starters, you know, Velour. Was that your hair or a wig? <laughs> no, it's it's um it's not a wig. The tracks. That looked like a wig to me. Well, you think you can get some new tracks? Marsha, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Hey. Well, that's good that you're here. And are you going to continue to be here? Yes. So you're not going back to school? Yeah, I don't think so. I need you focused, committed, and practicing like 24-7. Definitely, yeah. And Ron, you're sitting there at a the piano. Right now, you need to, at, at a minimum, practice piano so that you can play this damn song and sing it at the same time. Eddie, I thought you were very comfortable on stage, but to be frank, man, vocally, you have to start singing so that I can hear you, because I can't hear you. If that's the problem, then you can't be the singer. And Gabrielle, how are you? I'm fine. It doesn't look like you want to be on stage. You want to do this, right? Um, yes. I'm waiting for you to take that giant step and burp out your problems and get them over with. Are you all right over there? Yeah. All right, I wish you luck. I'll see you soon. Peace. Peace. Side note. I honestly felt like their management pushed them a little too soon into this performance, especially since they only had two days to prepare and they had never performed together before. And I thought it was pretty cringy for a white man to criticize a black woman's hair on national television. But I digress. Because of Eddie's vocal performance, management brought in two guys to audition to either replace him or to add one of them to the group. 15-year-old Josh from Chicago. Performance tape in Chicago. D did and we dug it. Come whisper in my ear. Tell me what are your heart desires. Girl, I feel that you're the one. And 19-year-old Miguel from California. Yes, that Miguel. We got some songs from Miguel. There's some producers that we knew in LA. And then we had him go on the bus to demo the songs and see what the vibe was like. The way you look at me. I get this feeling inside. Obviously, Eddie B wasn't too excited about possibly being replaced, noting that he felt he was a huge asset to the group, being that he was one of their strongest writers. I'm just tired of being questioned what I'm, what I'm not doing. Cats ain't looking at what I am doing. Most of the hooks, everybody's going, this is hot. You know, what did I come up with this with? It's like, damn, I, you know, I wrote that. They don't know that. They don't know Chills was, Eddie wrote that. Boogaloopy, Eddie, I like that girl. You know, damn near half of the songs on the album. Management brought in Miguel for a audition for the group. And needless to say, things didn't go over so well. He's talented, but it's like Eddie's song. Miguel's overconfident. Yeah, he's a great vocalist, but what the hell is he doing? Yeah, he has a beautiful voice, but I'm not impressed. Valora well, Miguel was going at it immediately. That's my part. Oh, that's your part? I didn't know that. And the kids start singing Valora's parts. So she's just looking at him with that face like, the whole time his confidence was too big for everybody else to fit in the same room with Miguel at the same time. Ultimately, Valora is the strongest singer in the group. She likes it that way. Valora felt that Miguel was too cocky and that management was just bringing him in to compete with her. Needless to say, Miguel didn't make the group, but I'm more than sure that he landed on his feet. Then management brought in Josh. Come whisper in my ear. Tell me what your heart is at. Seeing like his performance and seeing it, I was kind of like, whoa, this kid is hot. You know, he's, he got mad talent. See you next.
Josh clicked with the group almost immediately. He brought balance and was added as the sixth member, which allowed Eddie B to stay in the group. Now that the group was solidified, they worked toward fine tuning their image, performance, and filming their video for their first single, Bounce. The group went on a multi-city radio tour to help promote the release of their album. Their single Bounce was featured in the Fat Albert movie and was the theme song of the NBA playoffs. Their album, The House of Fatty Coo, was released June 21st, 2005. It peaked at position 22 on top R&B and hip-hop albums and stayed on the chart for four weeks. And it peaked at position 64 on Billboard 200, spending two weeks on the chart. The fan favorite song, Chills, was released as their second single, but surprisingly, a music video was not released with the song. And after that, the group completely fell off the radar. So, what happened to Fatty Coo? Well, according to group member Gabrielle, this is what she had to say about three years ago. For those asking where we are and what happened, I don't mind answering. We had the theme songs to the NBA playoffs, songs and movies, fans around the world, and ranked high on the Billboard Top 200 chart, and our show was the highest watched on the network. Our tour with the Black Eyed Peas was actually canceled. Opportunities kept falling through, and the department we were signed to in Sony was soon to not even exist after letting us go. It was hard to get another label because we were so different and eclectic, and that even though they loved our music, they didn't want to take a risk because we wouldn't fit into a box. Many believe we were just ahead of our time. We had the growing fan support, but not the resources at the time. YouTube hadn't come yet and most of us came from nothing. So when it ended, we mostly felt lost and returned home. Some went to school, others continued writing and producing for other artists, and some started families and moved on. And we did mostly get along. As for the group members now, Gabrielle is still performing and she is also a vocal coach. She's most active on her Instagram, which has a pretty nice following. Marja is now a registered yoga teacher. She specializes in Tai Chi, meditation, Thai yoga massage, and so much more. She is also a proud mother. Eddie B is still songwriting and producing. He's a public speaker and also has a beautiful family. Ron is still creating music. He obtained his MBA. He's married now with a beautiful family. Joshua produced for the Purple King himself, Prince. He is married to fellow musician Hannah and they have three children with one on the way. Throughout the years, Valour was still making music after Fatty Coo. She is also a mother. In my opinion, I think this group was set for failure. I truly believe that it was a cash grab for the management group to make money off of the reality show. They were signed prematurely and expected to be bona fide professionals and superstars after only being together for three months. There's no doubt that Fatty Coo had the talent. I was big fans of theirs and would watch the reality show religiously and really wanted them to win. But unfortunately, they didn't have the right team behind them to take them to the next level. Maybe one day we can see the reunion of this short-lived group. But until then, I'll continue to listen to their first album. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.
Bye.